Well, hello everyone, welcome again to Network 13, and today we're going to be building a JFET voltage amplifier. More specifically, a common source JFET voltage amplifier with a self-biasing scheme. The design requirements for our amplifier are as follows. It has to be able to amplify an input signal between 500 hertz and 3 kilohertz. The input signal can be up to 200 millivolt peak to peak maximum or as small as 20 millivolts peak to peak minimum. Our target voltage gain is going to be 6 and the device we're going to be using is a Fairchild J201 N channel JFET. All right, as you can see here, I mean, I've kind of already figured this design out. I've already determined component values. I've already established the DC operating point or the Q point of the circuit. I already have a pretty good idea what the voltage gain is going to be. So I'm kind of doing this backward. Um, what I really need to show you first is this, which is the transconductance curve for the FET. So I built this test circuit. And what I was able to do was sweep the voltage gate to source in 100 millivolt steps, and I was able to record the drain current at each step. And that's what you see on the curve here, all these points. So I swept the gate to source voltage from zero to minus two volts, and I recorded drain currents anywhere from zero to 2.25 milliamps. That's all these points here. All right, so what do you do with all this data? Well, you use the transconductance curve to set your Q point. And what you want to do is you want to set your Q point when there's no signal coming into the circuit. You want to have it, kind of have it in the mid-range between no current and maximum current. And you want to kind of have it in the mid-range between zero gate voltage and cutoff at gate. So you have to determine the sweet spot. And the sweet spot I picked was right here, which is minus 600 millivolts gate to source and one milliamp of drain current. Now, if you take the slope of the curve at this point, which is delta ID over delta VGS, you get the transconductance at that point, which is 1.7 millisiemens. Now we're going to use that later when we go back to the do our design. And the other thing you get from the curve is if you draw a line from the origin through the Q point, you have this line here, you take the reciprocal of the slope of this line, which is delta V over delta I, it works out to be 600 ohms. That's the value that we're going to set our source resistor to in the circuit. So if we come back to the schematic now, we have a few more pieces of the puzzle. We know the transconductance. We know the value of the source resistor, which I set to 620, which was the closest standard value that I had in my, in my, uh, in my parts inventory. And let's see, so we have a load resistance of 100K on this circuit. And we know what the transconductance is. We know what our target voltage gain is. So we can manipulate this formula we can figure out what our drain resistance is, which is approximately 3.6K, another standard value that I had. And we can estimate what our voltage gain would be, which would be about 5.9, which is pretty close to the target, which we want of 6. The input impedance to the circuit is equal to the gate resistor, which is 100K. And the output impedance of this circuit looking into an open would be the value of the drain resistor, which would be 3.6K. Now these voltages that you see are the Q point voltages. So be with no signal coming in, this is what we would see on the source and on the drain and on the gate. We see zero volts on the gate because we have this 100K ohm resistor um, holding this at zero. Likewise, we have the Q point current going through the source resistor, which is causing a 600 millivolt voltage drop. So if you look at this another way, the gate is biased 600 millivolts negative with respect to the source, which is what we want in a JFET circuit. You always want the gate to channel junction to be reverse biased. And also we'll have 5.5 volts at the drain with no signal input. 
Okay, this is the actual circuit and it's built up. I have a signal going in, uh, 100 millivolt peak to peak, and I'm measuring a 560 millivolt peak to peak output at three kilohertz, which I believe is one of our limits, yes. So let's measure some of these Q point voltages. First of all, the drain, now I predicted 5.5 volts at the drain and I'm measuring 5.5, all right. Um, gate voltage should be zero, which it is, and the source voltage, I said 600 millivolts, and 599. Okay, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Now, this is at three kilohertz. Now, if I increase, find my screwdriver, I should be able to increase my input signal to 200. And at 200 millivolts in, I'm getting 1.16 volts out, so that's a gain of 5.8. So let's go to the other extreme, which was 20. I have to go to another range for that. Twenty. Oh, too far. Too far, too far. Uh, that's pretty close. Okay, so it, I'm gonna trigger. Okay. So at 20 millivolts peak to peak, and I'm getting, hmm, 100? So let's figure that out, 100. That's actually, it's, 18.4 so the gain at this end is 5.4 okay it's 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 not it's not 5.9 but okay it's still pretty close let's go to the other extreme on the frequency now which was going to be 500 Hertz okay if they're just for that All right, that's 500 hertz. The gain is about the same at the low end. Um, so let's go back to 200 millivolts. I'll have to adjust these again. Go back to 200. So that's 200. Uh, so once again, we're back at a gain of 5.8. So 1.16 volts peak to peak out. 200 millivolts peak to peak in, and this is at 500 hertz or so. And as you can see, you know, I'm putting a triangle wave in because you can spot the, any distortion a little better with a triangle rather than a sine wave. But you can see this is a this is a nice clean output. It's nice and clean, and it's not really distorted at all. And even if we go back to the other the other frequency extreme, so let's even push this a little higher. Let's go to how high can this go on this range? Let's put this up to, I think that's as far as we can go. We'll go to the next range then. All right. This is 90 kilohertz. I mean, it's it still looks good. The, the gain is still there and it still looks good. Um, Next range up. All right, that's a little too high. Uh, this is about 200 kilohertz. Once again, the gain is pretty good. We're still we're still around 5.8, 5.9, and the signal looks pretty clean. So this is pretty good. This is this is a pretty good successful experiment. Um, so this design is working at our design requirements and it's putting out a nice clean signal so I'm happy with that.
the last thing I want to show you before we before we end today is if we increase the input voltage and we bring it up too high the output will start to distort and you can actually see it starting to happen now it's looking a little less like a triangle and starting to be rounded out um, let's see if we go further 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 up so my gain is actually going down my signal is getting more and more distorted so that's what you want to avoid that's why we had a specification about keeping the input at 200 millivolts peak to peak instead of almost the almost two that I've just brought it to <laughs> anyway we'll put that back where it was and there we go and I will end by saying I hope you enjoyed this video today feel free to give it a thumbs up if you liked it Comments and suggestions are always welcome, either in the comments section or by email to network13.contact at gmail.com. Also, if you like these kinds of hobby, tronic, tutorial, demo, build type presentations that I'm doing, please consider subscribing to my channel. There are several other videos there that you may enjoy. And as always, thank you for watching.